Alright, welcome back to the next video in this series. In this video, we are going to start on the player death. I guess you could call it the death uh, system. <laughs> I don't know. There's going to be uh, some coding on event sheets, and then we're going to set up a function and run the function within other blocks of code. We are going to be using a for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's hop over to our level one layout. And I am going to double click in the layout and scroll down to particles. I'm going to insert my particle uh, just wherever. There's good. And I am going to resize this to three by three. Pretty small. And we can zoom in and find a nice red color, uh, something to use as blood. So I am going to drop my saturation down quite a bit, bump up the brightness, maybe a little less saturation, something like that. And I'm going to select the pencil tool and just put one dot right in the middle. We can exit out of this. Let's name this particles underscore uh, death. Uh, I'm going to drag our player sprite. Whoops. I'm going to lock the tile map bricks layer first, and then unlock my player layer, and then drag the player just off the, the uh, layout over here. And this is just going to be a reference so we can get an idea of uh, how big we need to make this. I have to unlock my tile maps again because that is the layer it ended up on, I'm going to move this to the player layer. And then I can lock that again. So on the player layer, we can select our particle death. And I'm going to rotate it to 270. So it should be pointing up like that. And I'll just drag it down here, close to our player, something like that. Now let's scroll down here to the properties and let's set some properties up. Uh, I want a lot of blood, so I'm going to bump that up to 200. And I want my spray cone to be uh, straight across, so uh, 180 degrees. Whoops. 180 degrees should make it flat like that. And then the speed, uh, let's bump that up to 300. The size, I'm going to set at 10. And then let's preview that. Okay, so let's change our continuous spray to one shot. There we go. So that's what we got so far. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want the, the spray to spray up, but then I want it to come down. So let's increase the gravity to, I'm going to go 1500. We can preview that. So that's almost what I want. Uh, let's change our Y randomizer. Uh, let's just make that 100. And our, and I'm saying Y for the uh, vertical direction. And then our speed randomizer is going to be, let's say 100 as well. So that's a little more what I'm looking at. Uh, how about the size? I want the size to be a little bigger because when it makes that one pixel size uh, red dot, when it when it makes it bigger, it will get pixelated and blurry because it's trying to scale up something that's originally just one pixel. So I'm going to set a randomizer for the size and uh, I'm just going to do 100. So it's more of a a blob with a few little specks in there because it's random somewhere between uh, 10 and 100. So there we go. We want fade to invisible. I'm going to lower this. Let's say 0 0.7. All right. I think that's what I want. Zoom out a little and see, I just put it over our player to see what it's going to look like whenever whenever he hits a spike, it's just gonna splat, splat. Okay, I'm happy with it. 
delete that instance and go into our meta layout. So call that up if you don't have it set up already. And come down here, let's grab our particles death and move it into the particles folder. And then let's just drag a copy out into our meta layout. And we can see down here, everything that we set up is still intact. So that looks good. I like that. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna put him there in the corner. It doesn't matter where he is. We're going to destroy him later on. Hop on over to our uh, main. And actually, I want our controls. So let's go over here to our event sheets and get our controls called up. And I'm going to create a new group. And I'm going to call this player death. If you remember, we set up a purple collision called collision death. And that's what is going to cover our spikes. So whenever our player collides with this collision, it is going to enact the death uh, code that we set up. So let's go ahead and add an event to the player death group. And let's navigate to our player and say on collision with another object. And let's pick collision death. So typically here we would destroy the player object and then uh, create our blood particle to show that uh, he has died on the spikes. But we are going to need him to not be destroyed due to the camera object following him. So instead of destroying him, we are going to just make him invisible. So let's go to sprites, go to our objects, get our player, and find our visible, set visible, and say set invisible. So when he collides with the spike, which will actually be the death collision, he is going to go invisible and then we are going to spawn another object in his place. Add an action and let's go to our sprites, our objects, our player, and then just type in spawn another object. And that object is going to be our particle death. And we want it to be on the player layer. So layer, player. And when we spawn another object from a different object, we can spawn it at an image point. I'm going to uh, just say image point one. And then let's go to our player. Let's call him up and go to our origin. So I'm going to set up a new origin point because I don't want the, the blood spray to come from his feet. Uh, I think that looks funny. So I'm going to right click, add a new image point, and I'm going to put it just right about there, right in the middle of his head. Right click on image point one and say apply to all animations. Okay, so we should have our image point in every frame of every animation of our player. So let's exit out of that. And now it will spawn that particle at image point one, which is his head. Okay, let's go over to our level one layout. And I am going to put our character, our player, our little knight, uh, right back into place, right there. Actually, I'm gonna move him up here so we can get to the spikes faster. And then I'm going to drag out an instance of our collision death. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to just cover all our spikes with this collision box. All right, that covers all the spikes anything that would cause a death is now covered in purple. Now, something that I figured out when I made this game the first time is that 
we can be a little nicer to our player by just cheating these collision boxes in just a little bit. And it might not seem like it makes that big of a difference, but through a lot of testing, I found out that in some instances, moving these collision boxes in just a little can actually help with your level design. So I'm gonna click onto the layer and I'm going to turn off grid snapping. So now I can go in, select, and just use these side handles to move in just a little bit so that it's not the entire square bounding of the spike. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of touch up all these boxes just a little bit. So uh, that's done. So let's go ahead and preview. And there we go. So our player is invisible, but he's still uh, running because we haven't told it to do anything else. And it's quite funny. So I'm going to refresh. And so the blood is working. So we can go into our controls event sheet. And in our player death, let's go ahead and add another action underneath that. Go to our sprites, get our player object, and scroll down to uh, our platform actions. Select set enabled, and then we want to change that to disabled. And click done. So now we can play that. And the camera stops. All right, I'm going to refresh that jump over that hit those okay so our player is still there he's just invisible and the camera is still attaching itself to the player but the player is just not moving because we took away the platform behavior which is what makes it move so one of the things I don't know if you have noticed whenever we let's preview this again whenever we die all our blood sprays off to the right and even though we changed it in our layout in the meta layout it's actually creating a new instance of it at its original uh, direction its original state what we need to do is once we create the particle death we need to tell it to face a different direction so let's add an action go into our sprites and into our particles let's get our death particles and let's set the angle to 270 that's facing straight up all right, we can slide that right underneath our spawn particles death, and that should do the trick. And we are on the metal layer. Make sure your last layout picked is uh, level one so that we can actually see everything work. There, much better. Okay, so the next thing, uh, if we go back to our controls in our player death logic here, I want to add a little uh, effect. So. I'm going to make the screen shake when we hit a spike. So let's add an action and let's grab our camera in our meta folder. And let's scroll down to the scroll to behavior and pick shake. So for the magnitude, uh, I'm going to go with 10 and the duration is going to be 0 0.4 and the mode reducing magnitude. So I'm going to click done and I'm going to move that up above our platform disabled. And now we can test that out. And we got a little bit of screen shake. It's, it's subtle, but you can definitely see it. And I like it. Pretty simple, cool little effect there. When the player uh, hits a spike and dies, I want to set up some more code that identifies whether or not the player is alive or not. I'm going to create an instance variable through our player object. So click on the player and let's go to edit instance variables. We're going to add a new one and this one is going to be called is dead and initial value is going to be zero and zero is going to stand for alive and one will be true uh, that 
yes, he is dead. After all this happens, let's add an action and go to our player sprite. And we want to access instance variable and set the value. And we want is dead and we want to change it to one. I'm going to add a new event to player death and I'm going to grab our player again and I'm going to scroll down to compare instance variable and I'm going to say when is dead is equal to one because we set it to one so now this can be true and we are going to destroy the player so let's go to our player and I'm just going to type in destroy so now we can kill the player we can destroy the camera up here too so let's add an action and let's go to our camera object let's hit destroy on that and I'm gonna put it above our is dead I'm actually gonna put in uh, a wait time so let's add an action go to system wait and let's wait two seconds and then let's slide that up under our disabled platform so let's see what we have. When we collide with the death collision, our player goes invisible. We spawn some particles. We set the angle of the particles. The screen shakes, and we disable the platform behavior. And then we wait two seconds, which gives the blood time to uh, spray and fall off screen. And it gives the player time to realize that uh, they have died. After those two seconds, we're going to destroy the camera, and then we're going to set is dead to one, which will allow us to destroy the player. And then we are going to uh, restart the layer. So let's add an action, go to system, restart layout. So this will change eventually, but this gives us something to work with here. So let's play this. and. We died, it waits two seconds, and it restarts the layout. So now we don't have to refresh anymore. We just wait two seconds. So if we, if we make it higher up the level and we die, it starts us back where we started. Okay. That is the first part of our player death. In the next video, we are going to create a particle system using a loop. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one and don't forget to save.